right, hello and welcome. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Kelly Roach, who is out and about in Westchester, Pennsylvania today. How are you doing, Kelly? Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, John. Yeah. And uh, K- Kelly has her own coaching business. She's an ex NFL cheerleader, health and fitness nut, a mom. Um, but yeah. she has handled hundreds of millions in assets and managed dozens of teams across uh, 17 locations and broke every sales record in, in her Fortune 500 company's history, all before the age of 30. So it just makes the rest of us sound like slackers, <laughs> can I say? <laughs> oh, um, thanks. So um, Kelly's also um, written a couple of books, and her latest book is called uh, Bigger Than You, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Building an Unstoppable Team. And what I wanted to talk to Kelly about today is I think building teams has become more and more difficult for people or certainly perceived as more and more difficult people because we have intergenerational issues. We have a very competitive market. We have people who seem, especially with remote working now, people jump jobs a a whole lot quicker and easier than before. And this puts up these obstacles or perceived obstacles to building a a good, solid, sustainable team. So yeah. So give me your give me your thoughts on that and why you wrote the book and um, you know what the genesis of that was. Yeah, definitely. Well, here's the thing, John, is, you know, I was working with all of these entrepreneurs, helping them to build and grow their businesses. And, you know, obviously, I always say there's two big struggles when it comes to growing your business. One is figuring out the sales and marketing systems to actually successfully grow in a profitable way, right? And most people never figure that out. But if you're lucky enough to figure that out, or you get a great coach to help you to do it, Then the next big obstacle is becoming a strong enough leader and understanding enough about leading people that you can successfully build a winning team. And what I found was I kept having clients that worked their tails off on the sales and marketing piece that then realized I'm going to slide back and I'm not going to grow and I'm not going to be able to accomplish my goals if I don't get the right team. But they knew nothing about management or leadership or how to retain people or how to motivate people. And so I wrote the book really for like my own um, service to the entrepreneurial community because there's not a lot of resources to teach entrepreneurs how to lead. And, you know, when you're starting your business, everything is all about getting clients and sales and marketing. And all of that is great for small, small solopreneurs and businesses that are in startup mode. But once you get past that startup mode, your multi six or seven figures, it is all about people. It is all about team. And there's no one out there talking about it, probably because so few businesses actually successfully make it to that part. Right. So it's really it's really fascinating because, you know, obviously entrepreneurs and I've seen this, you know, firsthand myself, you know, is is that obviously when somebody starts a business and you know they pour their heart and soul into it and then as you say they get to a point where they have to involve other people there's a strange dynamic isn't there because um it's hard to bring other people on even though you need to bring them on and then it's hard to let go of things and it's hard then to trust when you let go of things that they're going to be done properly and so you have almost an inherent conflict built in from the beginning Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, what I always say with that, John, is, you know, you have to be an engineer. You have to literally create an infrastructure in your company with the way that you set up the systems for onboarding and people management and performance tracking and, and the way that you want things to be executed in such a way that the barrier to entry for people to come into your company and be successful is very low. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, for most entrepreneurs, the barrier is extremely high, meaning that it takes practically a rocket scientist to be able to follow their nonsense because it's this jibber jabber of stuff that they've been doing themselves that's all up in their head versus documented systems and streamlined processes and really clean, effective job descriptions and ways of managing people. It's not so much that you have to relinquish control and and trust another person as it is that you have to have the discipline to be willing to put the infrastructure in place that can make an average person exceptionally successful in your organization. And that's a very different mindset. 
right? Uh, no, it is completely. And obviously it requires the requires the entrepreneur or the founder to take a step back for a moment and actually create those processes, which yeah. again is not something that they all naturally want to do, right? Yeah. Or love doing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You yeah. Have- and it's, it's, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say you have an interesting, I was looking at the, you know, your, your book and the chapters here. You have an interesting, the quicksand hell of a duct tape team, yeah. <laughs> which I love. So what, what, what yeah. do you mean by that? Well, what I mean by that, John, is that I find that the vast majority of entrepreneurs really try to take shortcuts and piece together the cheapest, um, least management required set of assets possible to build their business. So a lot of times it's outsourcing, it's part-time contractors, it's, you know, the neighbor down the street that, you know, is out of work that's going to help for an hour a week. And it's, it's really this duct tape team of this hodgepodge of people that are not culturally invested in the success or failure of their organization. It's not their career, so they don't have a vested interest in whether or not you hit your goals. And you're not invested in them, and therefore... You're a part-time gig to them, which means you're going to get part-time mindset, part-time work, part-time commitment. Um, And and that's what a lot of times leads to so many breakdowns in small businesses. Yeah, and that uh, that obviously then uh, perpetuates churn and continually replacing and swapping people out. And you have a... And then you have another chapter after that is you can't fire everyone, right? <laughs> yeah. Which, let's face it, we've all been tempted, tempted yeah. to fire everyone and fire ourselves at the same time. <laughs> and I just, you know, I put that in there because I heard that phrase from my clients so much. I just want to fire everyone. And, you know, obviously, I want everybody to read the book for yourself. Sure. So that I don't want to spoil all the secrets. Yeah. But, you know, what I always say to them is it, it, it's a mirror of you. So, you know, when, when, you know, a coach is coaching a team of all-star players and the team fails, is it that the players aren't all-star players or is it that the coach is, is not leading them well? And a lot of times it's that the coach isn't leading them well. And obviously everyone has a, a piece in the success or failure of any situation. But, you know, when you're really frustrated with everyone and everyone's disappointing you and everyone's letting you down – a lot of times it's more of a reflection of your leadership than it is of their performance. Yeah, and you and you raise an interesting point with the with the coach uh, with the coach piece and obviously, you know, coaching is is what you do. Um but this is obviously where a lot of entrepreneurs and and people fall down a little bit is that they don't go and get a coach for themselves, right? You know, they may they may decide they can coach the people around them, but nobody's coaching them. Oh, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. And, you know, it, they always say, like, never hire a coach that doesn't have a coach, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's a very scary thing. You know, a CEO is the only person in a business that doesn't have someone that is their oversight that's guiding them and, and you know, holding up a mirror for them with what they're doing. So, you know, I think that a lot of the businesses that fail obviously fail because, the entrepreneur didn't have a business background and they didn't hire a coach to help them. So they're just kind of making it up and guessing and testing and hoping and really, and hope is not a strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I came from a fortune 500 background and I did nothing but business and I was doing business growth strategy. And yet when I made the decision to start my business, the first thing I did was hire a coach. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't even have a client yet. I didn't have a website. I didn't have anything. The first thing I did was hire a coach because I was not willing to spend the the stupid money or waste the years of my life doing trial and error. I was like, you know, I want to do this the right way the first time. And how often when you actually engage with, with someone in a coaching capacity, how often do you hear the, I wish I'd have done this sooner? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I, constantly. Uh-huh. Constantly. Yeah, yeah. of course. So, so it it is one of the like I said, it's one of the issues if you're building a team and you don't really know how to build a team. So you know you're off to not a great start. So if even if you get a coach in place, 
Um, talk to me a little bit about we. Uh, it's weird. I mean, one day I woke up and I realized I was talking about the younger people and the younger generation and all of this, and I was like, oh my goodness, what happened? Um, but we we seem to have a such a a, a multi generational workforce today, and they seem to be on the surface or perception wise all very very different, and that's be that's raising its own challenges when you're trying to manage a team who are all coming from very different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the most important thing when you build a team is clarity around your own culture and having a profile of the type of person that will survive and thrive within your culture. Mm -hmm. Because whether it's young or old or new or advanced or, you know, seasoned or just graduated or whatever the case, it's a certain set of personality traits and, you know, behaviors that's going to make someone be a good fit or not be a good fit. And I think that most entrepreneurs rely far too hev heavily on hiring for skill. And that's why there's very high turnover because skill really doesn't matter because if, if someone has a skill, but they're not a cultural fit, they're not going to stay and they're not going to excel in your organization because they don't understand the, the language and the mindset and the behavior of why you do things. So something that would be considered high performance and good in one organization can be considered low performance and bad in another. And hiring someone that has the skill doesn't in any way, shape or form guarantee that they're going to positively impact your organization. So I think a lot of it is a misunderstanding of how to assess people and how to make hiring decisions that are actually going to be a long-term fit for your organization. Yeah, and, and you raise another very interesting point there because even the, with the concept of culture, because you can only hire to culture if you understand what the culture of your organization yeah. is, right? Yeah. And let's face it, a lot of times we allow culture to kind of organically develop without yeah. ever guiding it. Yeah, absolutely. you're absolutely right. And it's like the most important thing, like the most important thing when it comes to not just your staff, but your clients, retaining your clients and having them progress through your ecosystem and driving lifetime value, which is one of the most important indicators of long term success for a business. That's all culture. And so I think when people hear the word culture, they think of like a corporate word that is like soft um, about like a mission statement on a wall or like a value system that someone, the founder wrote 10 things when they started the company. That is not culture. Culture is everything. Culture is the living, breathing experience that someone has in every moment of every day that they interact with you or anyone else in your organization. Yeah, and I think that's become even more critical now because um, because of all the different points of contact and intersection that yeah. you know customers and prospects and the whole world has with the company now that if you don't have a coherent uh, philosophy of how you do business and how you know you interact, then people can get very very different experiences depending on what point they intersect with the company. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, not only that, but with market saturation on the client side and the competitive market on the candidate side, if you don't have culture as a key differentiator, it will be very difficult for you to stand out in your market and charge at, at the top tier um, for what you're doing. So there, there's so much more to culture than what meets the eye. And people don't realize how much culture actually is what drives the, the growth and success of a company. And how do you then, how do you help or guide people or help them actually figure out their culture or become more cognizant of it? Yeah, I think what I teach my clients is even knowing the importance of focusing on culture will, and, and making a concerted effort to cultivate a culture puts you ahead of 99.99999. Like you don't have to be skilled to stand out in this area, you just have to care. Right. So what I tell my clients is start by caring and having a concern for culture. And then from that, you develop the value system, what the everyday experience is like, what you reflect to the world that 
you know, you value, what behaviors are and are not okay in your organization. How do you treat each other? How do you treat your clients? What, what makes it a different experience to work with you? You know, asking yourself those questions is a great way to develop your culture and really, you know, have a blueprint for, for what you want this animal to look and feel like. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. It's a great place to, uh, to conclude here. Um, but before you go, Kelly, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, your organization, and how they can find out more about you. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm a business growth strategist, and I help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs to scale. Um, I really focus on systems for sales, marketing and team. So really looking at the infrastructure and how we can engineer success systematically so that it's sustainable. Um, my core focus is sustainable growth. So not that quick overnight, one trick mm -hmm. pony, but actually engineering something that can stand the test of time. And I put out a ton of free content to help people grow their business. So I have a podcast that goes live every week. It's called Unstoppable Success Radio. And it's on iTunes and everywhere that podcast are found it's in the top 100 for marketing and management podcasts and i have a free facebook group where i do live trainings every single week to teach entrepreneurs how to scale online and it's called the tribe of unstoppables wow that's fantastic uh, so again my name is john golden sales pop online sales magazine pipeliner crm kelly roach thank you so much for joining us today and taking yes. time out of your day again the book is bigger than you the entrepreneur's uh, guide to building unstoppable teams which i think is uh, is just a fantastic it looks like a fantastic book i'm going to look at it myself because to be honest uh, i don't think we can ever stop learning about how no. to build good teams no it's a worthy investment for sure okay thank you kelly and thank Thanks you all for, for joining me. us